presence of the Lord. Good. How to reach your goal? Well, each one of us might have a different goal. But how to reach it? A lot of things have changed since Tuesday morning. When I was working on this, the same it applies to right now as well. God is going to be coming from Genesis, Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 8. Most of y'all know it at the Tower of Battle. But we're going to be talking about that. If y'all are turning to it, God doesn't ask the impossible from us. However, when we use what is in our hands to do God's work, God blesses us and even uses our efforts to bring miracles. These miracles are for ourselves as well as for others. Now let's ask, let's ask the question, how can we reach our goals in life? What is that? What is your goals? How can we reach them? And I believe that is a fair question. Uh, now let's go about it. I want to try to answer uh, uh, this very important question. But I do believe that by answering this question, our lives can be changed for the better. First of all, the Bible, the Word of God, is not some ATM machine. That when you need something, you open it up and ask God to give it to you. I don't believe in that. I believe in what the Word of God says. God says He blesses those who blesses His others. Now I believe that. There's an old saying which is not biblical, but a lot of people believe it. God helps those who help themselves. That's not from the Word of God. Don't mistake that for the Word of God because it's not the Word of God. We can take it like this. God blesses those who bless others. Whatever that need might be. But let's go to Genesis chapter 11 verses 1 through 8. Actually, we go to verse 9. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And this is supposed to have taken place right after the flood. Somewhere in that period. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down, and this is the key verse right here. This is the key verse right here. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. Verse 6. And behold, the Lord said, Behold, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Brothers and sisters, there's something about being in one accord. There's something about coming together. Now verse 7. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their languages, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from death upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build a city. And verse 9 says, Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the languages, the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Heavenly Father, take your word and touch each heart as each heart needs to be touched this morning. In Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus. We first we see people coming together. God is calling His children to come together right now. We see tragedy after tragedy that's taking place across this world today. It's not going to get better. And I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just trying to wake people up. That's why we need to come together in unity. And we need to come together united as one as born again brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. 
not what you do, but rather what God has already done for you. Amen. And that's very important. When we come together, it stops us from scattering. You might say, well, brother, what do you mean? Well, if you're honest with yourself, you find yourself, you miss a Sunday, then another Sunday, then another Sunday, pretty soon it gets so easy to miss the next year, two, five, ten years. That's scattering. There's a scattering spirit that goes across churches today, and a lot of churches don't realize it. But you'll have one group of people meeting, and then a scattering spirit will come, and they'll leave there and go somewhere else. And that's just the facts of life. But when we come together united, that scattering spirit will have an awful hard time scattering born-again believers who's coming together. Amen. And it's important to come together. It's very important. Amen. By you and I coming together, it will keep us from scattering because why do we have a ministry time? The ministry time is for ministry as well, but it's also for others to see that God is moving in the lives of those that come up. And it's very important to say, you know, I'm not by myself. I am not by myself at all. I am like other people. Other people are going through things. I'm going through things. But what happens when we come together? We come together at one accord to pray. And then we see God touching each heart. And we say, you know, if God did it for that person, God will do it for me. Look what God is doing. God will do it for me too. We need to come together. We need to come together as one. There's power in unity. There's power. You know, it's hard to get a bunch of people together. For they have their own thoughts and they have their own ideas. For many want to please only themselves. They are first and others are second. It's all about us. You say, well, what, 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 what do we mean? Well, i got to be pleased before I worry about it. In fact, if I, I want to be pleased all the time. And I'm not really concerned about so-and-so if they're pleased or not. They made their bed, let them get in it. Well, I'll say this, they might have made their bed, but we want to help them make it up so they can sleep comfortable. Amen? Amen. We need to help each other. But you know, even like I said, this is hard, but it's not impossible when born-again believers want to come. And a lot of times, if we let tragedies take its natural course, we're going to come together because there is a common need and there is a common goal. Yes. And we need to come together. But we just don't need to come together for that one purpose. We need to keep coming together because there will be other tragedies, whether it's in a nation right now like the Philippines or like at Katrina or New Orleans in 2005, whether it's two years ago on the East Coast. Their, their tragedy is going to take place. Earthquakes are taking place everywhere. We're going to see more of it. We need to come together amen. in unity. Yes, tragedy is going to take place. And I say amen because that's just the way it is. But we need to use those tragedies to come together in one accord and pray and become united and not let the scattering spirit scatter us. Amen. I see a call now. I see a call. And I'm going to be honest, and I'm not going to be around the bush. I don't know what's going on anywhere else. But the Filipino community in this area, in this nation, needs to come together and run a card and pray for the Philippines. Don't ask, but pray for God to your Amen. Yes, amen. And I'm just being honest. Yes. We should have every Filipino right here, right now, praying, praying, and praying for the needs. And I pray that's going on in other churches right now. Yes. But this church needs to come together and pray for this nation as well. And pray for our families as well. Can I help me? Amen. 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 And that's what we're doing. That's what I want with the Father's house. Nothing else. I'm not, even, I'm, I'm not really interested in anything else. No, I'm not interested in building a bigger building. If God brings the people, God will bring the workers to do it. But my main objective is for people to get, to, 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 first of all, to meet Jesus, then they get closer to Jesus because when they meet Jesus and they get closer to Jesus, their lives are going to change. Amen. You will see a change in your life. And the world is not going to like it. Why? Because when the world sees you, they see the reflection of the cross in you and it makes them uncomfortable so they want, they want to get away from you and the best way to get away from you is making you get away from them. That's just the way it is. So if you're rejected by it, no believers start praising God because they see Jesus in you. 
Come on. And I tell you what, on Judgment Day, I'd rather for, Je for, for them to see Jesus in me than for me to change and try to compromise my beliefs with them because one day the Bible says every knee shall bow and, and, and yeah. confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. And I'll do it right here. I'll do it in prisons. I'll do it. I've done it here. I'll do it anywhere. I'll get anywhere you want and I'll get on my knees and I'll confess Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Because one day I'm, a, I'm, I'm not going to stand. I'm a, I don't know how it's going to be when I get, when I meet Jesus. But it says every knee shall bow. So that means I'm going to be bowing. And if I can't do it here, what makes me think I'm going to be able to do it there? Now we get serious, won't we? We cut the tomatoes right now. We, we, we get the tomatoes right now. We, we cut them. And they're ripe. Amen. When God is first and others are second, that doesn't mean we don't take care of our family. But I, I have four kids. And I got had one son that wanted me to support his gambling habit and his drinking habit. You know what his mama told him, huh? <laughs> if you do it, baby, you go get it yourself. <laughs> Amen. Now you get on out of here. Don't bring that trash in here. Don't bring that beer in here. Don't, don't, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. If you want to come in here, you're going to come in here without that trash. If you want that, and I'm calling it trash, that's all it is. And if you want that trash, you go over there and you get that trash. But I'm not supporting it. But I still don't. I still don't. Want to smoke? Well, they over 18 to 21. That's actually over 38 now. They want to smoke? Smoke. You want to drink? Drink. You want to gamble? Gamble. But don't have dad to supply your needs. <laughs> they respect us too. They respect mom and daddy too. They don't talk back to mom and daddy. Why? Because we set standards. And we didn't do what we asked them not to do. Come on, let's get serious. Come on. Mm -hmm. You want your kids to be... Come on, y'all know what I'm talking yeah. about. Come on. Hallelujah. When, when, we need, when we need a common goal in our lives, we need a common... You know, not only do we need a common goal in our lives, but we need a common goal in this church's life too. What's this church about? Proclaiming Jesus Christ. Amen. Praying to Jesus Christ. Believing that Jesus Christ is going to meet all of our needs. And y'all know me. I like everybody. I love everybody. Everybody's important to me. Why? Because God says I'm important to Him. Yes. Come on now. Praise the Lord. The common goal in our lives should be to get closer to God. The common goal in this church's life should be to get closer to God. That's what Inez has been sharing for the last two weeks. Getting closer to God. And when the anointing is on you, the anointing is on you. When the anointing is on you, the anointing... I want to be around anointed people. You know? I, I, you know it, 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 I just want to be around... You know, it's good to be around anointed people. You know what? When you're around anointed people, some of that anointing just liable to come off. Amen. Onto you. Amen. So I want to surround myself with anointed people who puts Jesus first. Because when you when you surround yourself with anointed people who got Jesus Christ first and they and they pray to Jesus Christ, that power and that authority that's flowing through them is going to flow on you. And I need it. Amen. 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 When you surround your people who just want to curse, drink, and raise sand and chase women, and women want to chase men, and they have no common goal about anything but doing whatever they want to do, whatever they're doing is going to rub off on you. And I'm here to tell you now, I don't need none of that. I don't want none of that. I want the anointing of God because when we lay hands on people, we want to see them set free. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Yes. I don't need all that other stuff. That's right. Amen? Yeah. Woo! Y'all feeling good? Yeah. When you get out of here, you're going to feel better. <laughs> Hallelujah. But reaching our goal. People coming together with a common language. There's only one language, but I want to bring it even further. 
It's not the idea of talking. The language is talking. Amen. That's what the Word of God says. But when you come together with a common goal, you're thinking the same way. You're acting the same way. You want to do the same thing. And that's what language, I believe, could be the spiritual language today. Is when people understand what God is telling them and they want to go about doing what God has told them. Amen. Amen. Now right now, I'll say this before, right? Everybody's thinking about something right now. Now you're listening, but you got something on your mind. Am I right? Amen. Our mind never stops thinking, by the way. Even when you're sleeping. Okay? Everybody is thinking about something right now. But now if we have a common language, that means we're coming together with a common purpose. Just like the upper room, we're coming together here with a common purpose. And when we come together with a common purpose, we understand each other because each one of us is trying to reach that same common purpose. Amen. That's why private prayer meetings are so important. Amen. And when I say prayer meetings, I don't mean a gossip chamber either. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you go to a prayer meeting for an hour and a half and they talk for an hour and 20 minutes and you got 10 minutes of prayer. I don't need too much of that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because if I want to know a lot about something, I look in the mirror and I find out a whole lot as I'm looking in the mirror that I don't like. Hey, come on now. You know, if I want to talk about something, I look in the mirror and I talk about me. I need to leave everybody else alone because I got enough wrong with me. I don't have time to fool with them. I need to fool with me. And I don't like gossip anyway. The second-hand party can't get it right. By the time you get to the third party, they don't know what they're talking about. By the time you get to the fourth party, they say what they want to say because they don't like somebody. Woo. If you want to know what the horse is saying, get into the front of the horse. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you how I feel. Praise God. When you have a common purpose, a common goal, you're going to get together to get it done. Why did God create all of us different? Each one of us here is different. Praise God, I'm so glad God created women. No, He made women. He created man and made woman. And I'm so glad. Because I got a pretty wife. Amen. I'm sorry, guys. Y'all ain't too good looking. My wife is pretty good. Amen. And I'm so thankful God made women. Hallelujah. And He made one for me. And that's all I got is one. That's all I need. That's all I'll ever want is one. O N E. That's capital letters. And, and, and when I'm on the computer, they got the size of a letter 12, which is about normal print. Well, mine is 199,000 because my one is so big, <laughs> this world can't hold it. Amen. You got what I'm saying, don't you? You got one, keep it. Amen. You don't need no other. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, what they were doing, come on now, now let's get back to it. What they were doing was not pleasing to God. But nonetheless, what did they do? They tapped into or they tapped onto the impossible. What, what, what was it? Verse 7? What was it? Verse 7? Let me see. I think it's verse 7 or 6 or 5 or something. Six. 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 Now this, this is what we need to key on, guys. All right, families. You want your families to get stronger? You want the church to get stronger? You want your finances to get stronger? Start doing what the Word of God says. Amen? Well, I don't believe in what the Old Testament says. You don't believe what the Old Testament says. Well, maybe you don't believe in Jesus Christ because the Old Testament is bringing you into the Jesus Christ. Come on now, be honest. Amen. I'm just being honest. You want your finances to get straight? Let the Lord tell you how to get it straight. Amen? And if you believe in salvation, if you believe in salvation, come on now, I don't take anything out. The Bible says that I believe in Old Testament, New Testament. Amen? It says, dance before the Lord, I'm going to dance before the Lord. It says, make a joyful noise. God didn't say, have to say, I was a Frank Sinatra. What God, all God said was, make a joyful noise. Why so get up here and make a joyful noise? God is pleased with me. Amen? I want to dance a little bit. I dance a little bit. I want to do what God's Word tells me to do and turn what's going to happen. Don't, 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 don't envy somebody else's prosperity, but rather find out how they got their prosperity. Come on now. All right, I don't want to get too much of that. But verse 6 says, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. All right, now listen. And this they begin to do, now, here we go. 
Now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Nothing will be impossible. You see how important it is to come together in a time of need? You see what we're saying here? We don't come together to argue and to fight. We come together to pray to Jesus Christ. Amen. And when you do that, you will see things start to change. Amen. First, it's going to start right here. Praise God. <coughs> it starts to start to change in your family. Your job is going to change too. Glory. Amen. Sometimes God uses adversity to get you out and get you something better too. I don't know. But the Bible says nothing will be impossible. <coughs> this is God speaking. For there is power in unity. And how do I know this? Simply because God says it. When people are working together, when people are praying together, when people are worshiping together, there is nothing impossible. How many of you believe that? Yeah. There's nothing impossible. Yeah. How many of you have ever been depressed? Just two of us? Three of us? Okay. Let's be honest now. You know how I got saved? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Back when I was about 26 years old, we had our own business and we were an electrical contractor in Jefferson Parish. We did, did electrical, we, we did electrical work all over. I had a brand new car, a pocket full of money, and a stomach full of beer and whiskey. I was in Spahel back in 1968 at night. I said, God, if you're real, I need help. And I threw up my hands. If you're real, I need help. Amen. That was a Sunday night. Monday night, I was at Mama's. Very seldom I've ever looked for that Mama's at that time. Either I was busy or I was drunk. Turn the TV on. Anybody has any idea who was on TV at that time? Yeah. Billy Graham. <laughs> and I kneel down, not in front of a TV. I don't bow down to optics. I bow down to Jesus Christ. And do not ever think I bow down to optics. Mm -hmm. That I do not do. Mm -hmm. Nor will I do it. Mm -hmm. I bow down to Jesus Christ. Amen. And I bow down in front of that TV and I accept the Lord. And He did send me material. And I cried out. <coughs> and God heard me. A little testimony. How many here knew that testimony? Mm -hmm. God is real. That's all I want to say. God is real. When people are working together, when people are praying together, and when people are worshiping together, there is nothing impossible. Say nothing impossible. Nothing impossible. I've been depressed. Somebody asked me, do you ever get depressed? Right now, somebody asked that. You ever get depressed right now? You better hurry up and know it. I have Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I have spiritual gifts. Yes, I speak in tongues. But that doesn't make me immune to the world. People today have got things mixed up. They think they have a spiritual gift and everything is going to go good. Everything is not necessarily going to go good. Amen? Amen? That's just the way it is. Yes, I do. But what do I do when I get depressed? In the name of Jesus Christ, to cast you out. Amen. 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 Now, why am I saying that? I'm saying that for each one of us to realize we're human beings created by God with frailties. That's why we need the Creator. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not going to let depression drown me. Amen. In fact, back when back when we had four kids. We had a flood, a hundred year flood, but it happened three other more years. Well, there's a lot of hundred year floods in that. But anyway, we had a flood. The backyard was flooded. The house was flooded. I had a little dog swimming in the living room. Amen. And, and, and the front yard was flooded. Everything was flooded. And I said, our dads, we need to teach our kids how to swim. Now, you know what they did? You know what they did? Melissa, I think, was four or five. Then. Well, I don't know. She's about four, I guess. I don't know. But you get swimming. Y'all know what swimmies are? Okay. When I get depressed, I don't drown in my depression because I ask God to put some swimmies on me and I come right to the top. Amen. And that swimmies is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
nothing will be impossible. Amen. May we all come together with a common goal. And may we all hurt when each other hurts. Yes. We've got people hurting in this, in this church right now. Yes. We need to join our heart together to hurt with them. Yes. Come on. Amen. 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 With a common goal. And that common goal will get closer to God. For we will see things that we thought was impossible. Things that we never thought we'd see and experience. Because we're coming together in one accord. Worshiping a living Savior. And He's going to show us things that we never thought we could see. He's going to bring us to places we never thought we were qualified or good enough to go. And He's going to bless us with so many blessings. The kind of blessings that we need to enjoy each day to the fullest. Amen. 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 So I close with that. Families, moms, dads, husbands and wives, come together with a common goal Amen. to worship Jesus Christ Amen. and you will see changes like you've never seen. Amen. Church, come together with a common goal Amen. and we'll see miracles like we never thought we'd be able to see. Amen. Can we say, can I have an amen? amen? So Heavenly Father, bless each one now in the name of Jesus.